Oh my goodness, today is an exciting day and I can't, I can't help but smile, really. I'm going to bring back, at least in a limited form, the do-all bandsaw. Now, a lot of my new viewers, you know, probably don't know what I'm talking about, but basically by the end of this video you will. It was a big horizontal made by do-all bandsaw, metal cutting bandsaw that was destined for the scrapyard. This thing was absolute junk. They called it the scrapyard saw. They called me crazy for trying to fix it because it really had no business being fixed. They called it the redo-all bandsaw. There was not a piece on this saw, maybe the chassis, that wasn't cobbled, hacked, butchered, rigged in some way or another. This thing was absolute junk. We did make good progress on it. I've still got all the parts sitting over in the corner. We're going to dig into those, get you up to speed. You know, some of you will remember me fixing these parts. And then I'm going to take you outside and show you the saw. It's been sitting out there. Hadn't went anywhere. Two years. Feel a little guilty. I'm going to be honest for letting it get in the condition that it's in. But hey, sometimes you just got to push forward, admit, you know, you're not perfect, and continue on. And at least I want to get this saw before it's over in a functioning form. So it's been a long time. These parts behind this lathe have been resting for two plus years. And basically behind this lathe is a dual parts bandsaw graveyard. I'm going to be honest, I forgot about most of them. But what we're going to do is exhume these parts from their resting place one at a time. We'll go over them. It'll bring some of you down memory lane, I'm sure. It will me as well because I've forgotten a lot of this. We're going to exhume them so we can resurrect the dual bandsaw project. And we'll lay them out and we'll get a look at them and see what we're working with. So I'm going to pull these out kind of quick so don't blink or you may miss a couple. Uh, we've got vice jaws. Oh, goodness. Now this is a big saw. In case some of you you know, aren't familiar with the project, you'll see. This thing is a big, big dude. One of the, one of the vice jaws. Ugh. We didn't have to do anything to these, really. Two vice jaws. Lots of iron in this thing. Look at this. Da-da. Da-da, or ta-da. I said da-da. That is a really nicely cast aluminum dual bandsaw badge. Very nice. You don't see that kind of stuff anymore. Very nice. We've got, oh, this is, I remember doing this. Oh, this, because this saw was a, almost a fully automated saw. It had a hydraulic, the jaws were hydraulic. You know, it opened and closed. It had a bar feeder on it. This was a huge dude and it was fully automated. I didn't want, I didn't want that. Had no need for a fully automated saw. So as we went through this project, I modified the parts and pieces to work in a manual fashion. Now this was a hydraulic air cylinder that moved the jaw. I went in, modified it to where it is fully manual. So you just crank this handle and it applies pressure to the jaw. So that is the vice screw. Oh, look at this. Oh. This part here is the uh, roller wheel or the, uh, not the powered wheel, but the secondary uh, wheel for the bandsaw blade. And this is where it does its adjusting, where you tighten the bandsaw blade. Um, we had to remake these uh, slides here because it was just so worn. You can go back and watch the video. I did it years ago. Anyway, that part we, I think, even remade. Uh, we pressed out and remade this uh, this shaft here because it was just chewed into. All the bearings and stuff were, were gone on the wheels and it just totally annihilated all that stuff. So we did a lot of work on this thing. Not in the best of shape, but in better shape than it was when I got the saw. Oh man, I got parts over there as well. Let's just throw that over there. Here's the worn out belts that we never bought replacements for. Um, it's a big variable speed saw, uh, by the way. Uh, this is the paw that ratchets down on the movable section of the vise. It's quick adjust vise. Uh, this will make sense later on, but it's just a big chunk of cast iron. Look at that. You don't see... You, you don't see parts like this on modern saws, just telling you. These things are built to last, you know, lifetime. Oh. There's our main uh, drive pulley that goes on the gearbox. And that little groove there drove a secondary hydraulic pump. So really nice heavy duty cast pulley. We cleaned that up and painted it. Now look how rusty it is. Core is knocking. This is the paw 
for the vise that this locks into. So you just move the vise, you lock this down. When you screw that little handle that I modified, it presses on the jaw for the vise. Oh, look, we got Mr. Manhill. Hello. It's been a long time since I've seen you. Hello. <laughs> Hello, with a dude. What his hell's going so fast? Yeah, little Bobby. <laughs> yeah, so excited. Little Bobby uh, has been. Uh, yeah, it's Red River Gorge. He went hiking with Autumn for the last couple days, so he's excited to see me. Oh, look. We got vice parts for the dual bandsaw. I even bagged and labeled uh, variable drive shims because that sh uh, the variable drive speed thing was shimmed on it. What is this? I don't know. We didn't take the time to label it, but it's a bag of parts that probably goes with the do-all. There's another one. There is our drive and our idler wheel. I, I was trying that. The uh, uh, well, that skipped my mind. The idler wheel on the, when I was talking about the uh, this adjuster. Anyway, wheel covers. They're basically bandsaw hubcaps. We've got, oh goodness, some exciting parts coming. Oh, goodness, that looks horrible. That is the idler wheel. Man, it's 20 pounds of cast iron. That is the idler wheel that uh, goes on the adjuster. Ow, goodness gracious. A lot of people were super amazed, at, and myself as well at the quality of the parts in this saw. The, just nothing was held back as far as construction on this thing. It really was an amazing piece of equipment. Still is, still will be, but you know, just in limbo right now. Oh, come on. Oh, here's a piece you wouldn't want to have to buy, and that is the drive wheel. Looks a lot like the idler wheel, except it has a big helical cut gear on the inside, which is super nice, and it's in pretty good shape. It's it's definitely doable. So we even put we even put new bearings in these things. So we did we did a lot to the saw. Oh look, there is our filter. We replaced the screen in this. This is the filter that picks up from the coolant tray, uh, picks up coolant and uh, sprays it on the blade. This is the filter. We even replaced the screen in that, put some nice brass screen in there. Let's set that up on its side so we don't knock a hole in that. Okay, here. Oh, goodness, hold on, I'll show you. It's heavy. Oh my. This 30 pound, 35 pound piece is the extension that goes off the body of the saw that the vise slides in. So that. I've got some more over here, I'll show you. We're not done, we're close, but not done. Um, that is the channel, and that's a heck of a piece there. Our vice handle bolts on the end. You know, this thing here, you know, slides in there. Or it should, maybe it slides in the other end. You get the idea. Anyway, let me show you some of the other parts that are on the other side of the lathe. Oh, so don't you start judging me because I've got a mess here. That's just the way it goes around here. It work. 110 mile an hour and then, you know, don't clean up like I should. This, completely unrelated to the do-all bandsaw, is a huge piece of D2 tool steel, about six inches thick, 14 inches probably, I'm guessing maybe 16 inches uh, across. Quite an impressive piece, whatever they were making out of it. it was serious, I'm sure. But uh, looks like it was a drop. Looks like it's been torch cut. I'm not sure. It come from it come from auction, so it was given to me. There you go. Huge piece of unrelated steel. This is a half of a walnut shell that I have no idea where it come from. It had to be a mouse. But this is what we're after. Mm. Right here is the pivoting bracket for the big variable speed pulley that varies the speed of the bandsaw blade. Um, huge heavy duty pivoting bracket. I think we made a brand new shaft for it here. And uh, we may have even rebushed the uh, 
the pivot. I'm not for sure that we had to do anything down there, but uh, I don't know. You could go back and look at the video. We uh, we did address this. But anyway, that is the variable speed drive pulley pivot. Uh, let me dig under here. There's another very interesting part back here. This is the part I'm after. Very, very interesting part that, ow, that we had to do quite a bit to. And that is the variable speed drive pulley. Very, very complex part. It pivots, it, or it uh, adjusts to vary the speed of the, uh, of the saw blade. We remade this whole inner piece. I mean, it was pretty uh, involved. A job actually to make all of the shaft over. We even uh, what did we do? We fixed a crack in this. This was a pretty interesting video. I enjoyed doing it. We fixed a crack in it. We re-bored and bushed these uh, all three pieces. I think um, uh, we remade the inner hub. We rebushed the inner hub. We put a new gasket in it. We did a lot to this piece here. It, it is a very, very neat piece, still in fine shape, just needs a little, little bit of, you know, gray scotch bright on it. This will be ready to put a little paint on and go back on the saw. So for example, this is exactly the same pulley that I just showed you, except it's different. Exactly the same, but different in size. It does ex the same thing. As I, I'm gonna fire this up, uh, run this from high speed to low speed, and you'll see these belts are fixed in length. The position of this pulley will change, and because these belts are fixed in length, it will, when the, you pull on this one, it will push this pulley over towards this one, and it just varies the diameter of where these belts ride on this pulley based on its position. I'm gonna fire it up and show you super quick. A lot of you know it, but I'm gonna show you anyway. So that's slow as far as the blade is concerned. And as I move the unit, it changes speed. So that horizontal saw will do exactly the same thing. So I've got a few more parts to show you, but look outside. Look how dark it looks. It's gonna rain again. I uncovered the dual bandsaw to show you, and then it poured rain on it, so it added insult to injury. And uh, let's go out there <laughs> before it starts raining again, so I can at least show you the saw before I show you the rest of these parts that I got. Well guys, here she is, the old dual bandsaw. Now she's been under a tarp that has not been the most waterproof tarp for the last two plus years. So she's seen better days, but as heavy as this saw is built, it's gonna be fine. It's just caused us a lot of work. And in fact, I feel really guilty, to be honest, for, uh, you know, for letting it get like this. In fact, I'm gonna give myself a whipping. Well, I'll let you do it, because some of you really enjoyed this saw. And heck, this is what happened when I was a kid and I was bad. I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Mom would pull out the old switch and give me a wick. A little swipe or two. I'm gonna give this to you. Here's a here's a car antenna. Well, let's give you this one because it will hurt less, I think. So this is the back side of the old do all bandsaw. We'll bring you around front in just a second. Right now it's a mosquito pond because I uncovered it this morning. It didn't have quite so much water in it, just a little in the corner. But I uncovered it this morning and it rained really, really heavy. And just uh, you know, you see what it did. Filled it up with rain. And, uh, you know, it's not like that tarp's been helping that much anyway, but you get the idea. She's seen better days, but I think we can bring it back around. Like I said, this thing is heavy, and uh, a little bit of water in the coolant pan not going to hurt a thing. Uh, we will have to paint this saw, clean up these wear surfaces. Uh, these are plates that go onto the cast iron base. This thing is a beast. It really is. Look how big that pivoting bracket is. A little rust on that input shaft. Uh, yeah, we didn't make that new because it's got some wear on it. But we did polish it up, which we'll need to do it again. Uh, we remade a couple things over here, if I can remember. Uh, let's go around the other side. You'll see. So there's a look at the saw cover. I know it looks rough, guys, but this, if you remember, 
from if you were an old timer that watched the beginning videos it pretty much looked like this all the whole time i had it there's the uh, saw guide which has seen better days oh it's got ants in it wow a whole ant colony we won't disturb those guys for now anyway that's the cover you know there's nothing wrong there just a little surface rust that'll clean up and i can make that look like brand new let me get you around to the front side of the saw show you the business side so i've got you kind of back actually you're in the wood line a little bit and for me to go into those woods that is brave the ticks around here are horrible for the last five years we have had the worst ticks i've ever seen and if you just put your toe into the edge of the woods you're just going to go in take your clothes off and search your whole body because you're going to have a tick or two um the saw body on this thing really neat that's half inch thick plate this is such a serious saw it's, it's hard to believe that they would even build one i mean it's complete industrial grade saw it really is cast iron body um you know the jaw uh slides in this track here and then that piece extension that i showed uh, bolts out here up front it pins on as well there's our drive gear that drives the inside of the drive wheel i think we remade this shaft which is kind of rusty now but we did um check it check out that line around that hopefully you can see it maybe you can see it on this side i know the lighting kind of is horrible but because this saw was in such bad shape all the bearings and stuff were out of it the blade was just all over the place and it was even digging into the body of the saw almost cut completely in two and in some places like right there it did cut completely in two the half inch thick body of this saw that's just a big piece of heavy duty c channel and there's your uh, the slide for the i didn't show you those i will the blade guides just amazingly heavy really they slide back and forth on this this guy here and then the body or the frame of this saw chassis the, is all big coolant reservoir uh, actually it's a hydraulic tank because it was hydraulic powered and coolant reservoir so there you go there's a look at the body of the saw you know nothing's wrong here it's just cruddy but it'll clean up a little bit of rust in there but you know it had rust in there to begin with we just kind of contributed to it a little more back. Back. so let's take a little creek walk we'll do a little update on our bank reinforcement I haven't done that in a while it's been kind of rainy last week or so off and on been horrible but every time i want to do something outside you know just start training oh that ground squirrel shooting across here seen you busted bedrock and there's our bank reinforcement and it's holding up pretty dang good i must say you can see that this level here we're the bottom there that was the layer of bedrock that was flat across when we installed our bank reinforcement that holds up our shop by the way in case you don't know that was the original level so you can see how much is eroded quite a bit is eroded but our bank is held together thankfully now it won't be a thing really other than a, a slip and fall there's Daisy to have to oh, have to go in and uh, and redo it. I expected that. Oh, she's excited. Oh gosh! Let her go. I expected to have to redo this, you know, every few years. But golly! Oh gosh! She's so fast. My son's dog Daisy. Oh gosh, she's so excited. Typical lab, loves water.
walk up here. Let's go, girl. For a walk. How about that? Go on. Go. Get up. Living out here is pretty peaceful. I would not have it any other way. I love the fact that I can just come out, you know, take a walk in something like this anytime I feel like it. Oh, gosh, don't fall, girl. Which is uh, relatively often. I like to come down here and just, you know, unwind a bit. Here's my waterfall, which has moved back. Uh, probably, I don't know. 15 feet or longer or farther since I've lived here. Just keeps chewing away this bank and eating back. Which is just what they do. This one's no different. And when the water comes down through here real heavy, you know, it can be six feet deep. Just plowing down through here. Flipping all those big old rocks. Just rolling them. Rocks like that. You know, some of them weigh the, as much as a car. You can feel the ground shake when the water just rolls in big rocks down through here and it just keeps moving them on downstream. That's what it does. Pretty interesting. Violent is what it is. Like Daisy, she's violent. Violently energetic. Here is a natural spring, at least what I believe is a natural spring comes out of this hillside. Um, I've never had the water tested. I, I take that back. I did have it tested. Um, I had it tested at work years and years ago. It was good. But it could just be gone off from up here, maybe getting into the bank and then coming around under the hillside. Or it could be, you know, just a natural spring. But even when this is completely bone dry. Bone dry. This will run no matter what. It may slow down just slightly, but it, it does it does continue. You can see how it's cutting out. How it runs. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. So here's a few more parts that I dug out from under the grinder. We have a hydraulic pump. This is what powered the whole unit. We have Another handle. Remember I told you that the other one over there was for the vise? Well, I wasn't telling you the truth. I wasn't lying to you on purpose. I was not telling you the truth because I was confused. It has two of those. This one's for the vise. The other one is for blade tension. Both the blade tension and the vise were controlled hydraulically. You could do it manually, but they were also controlled hydraulically, which is really cool. So that one's for the vise, because I remember putting that handle on, that bolts on the long extension. You get the idea. We modified this to where it's no longer automatic, just manual, which will work uh, perfectly fine. This is the hydraulic cylinder. What a cylinder. That lifts the saw itself. The thing is super heavy, and that's one of my main concerns, is getting it to operate properly on the raising of the saw, and lowering it because it has to be a controlled lower uh, it's not going to be easy that's going to be the main hiccup i can guarantee you on this entire saw this is the electric motor that is a five horsepower general electric tri-clad induction motor i've been tempted so many times to use this on other things but in my mind i was like nope nope not gonna do it i'm gonna use it for the do all band saw when i get back on that project so here we are. I'm glad I didn't use it. Uh, in fact, I haven't mentioned it, but the motor in my K&T mill is basically, you know, out of service. Uh, you can use it, but you don't want to touch the machine while you're using it because it'll shock you. It's really, it's shorted. Anyway, that's the, that's the motor. I forgot to show you the uh, blade guides. Let's go over to the workbench. Uh, I want to show you those. Oh, 
also check out these blade guides. That's just cast cast iron. Check out how big that thing is. It does have a hollowed pocket because you know it didn't need to be that heavy, I don't guess. But it clamps on that beam that runs parallel uh, to the body of the saw, and you just use this full sized cast iron nut, which I was going to get. Uh, another one cast out of aluminum to match because it's missing one. You can see somebody, you know, welded on a on a bar there. But anyway, coolant. Uh, let me get you in a little closer. It'll, you know, it'll make more sense if you're here. Can see it close. So coolant runs through these two fittings. Let me turn on this light. Maybe that'll help. Maybe it won't. Coolant runs in between in these fittings and in between the blade guides. See these guides? They, they're adjustable in pressure. They sandwich the blade as it runs through, and you can hopefully see that that's got a carbide insert on it, and it's relieved in the middle for the coolant to get through. So it sandwiches the blade really hard, keeps it good and straight under a lot of pressure, it, and uh, the carbide keeps from eating into the blade, and uh, just for wear resistance, really. I mean, you understand what carbide does just super hard and that makes these last a long time not only is it carbide on the two blade guides but also on the top where the spine i guess of the blade rubs you can see that insert there and this one back here is rubber i guess i'm guessing that's to wipe off the uh wipe off the blade before it gets into the uh you know into the guide Hopefully that makes sense. Now, I don't have a ton of time to do a lot on this saw, but we can start cleaning it all back up and kind of get it moving in the forward direction. That's always the first step is, you know, just get situated. So that's what we're going to do. All right. Now, the schedule on the saw, I'm hoping to do just bi-weekly updates. You know, keep plugging away at this thing until I, until I get it. I can't devote all my time to it because i got a lot going on, but we can keep, you know, whittling away at this thing until we get it in a, in a functioning state. i got to get this thing, uh, get it clean, you know, get all the parts cleaned back up and, you know, decide what, what color I want to paint this thing. i got a ton of cleanup work to do, as you've seen. You know, it's not the funnest part, but it has to be done just like any other part of the project. That is just crazy. That's that's a pound of cast iron, maybe two, maybe a pound and a half, just for just for a handle. That's all it is. Look at that big washer. That's a cast iron washer. Not underbuilt. But anything that is used industrially, they know it's going to get abused. So they, at least they used to, build stuff to handle even the most abusive employee. adjuster nut and the spring washers and those spring washers as you push they kind of well in their name spring washers you know they load so it's not just solid when you snug this down against the blade it's not completely solid and uh, you know if you do pass a, a warp or a piece of warped where the blades welded you know it has a little bit of give in it and that's what those spring washers do love the engineering on this saw man it's you could argue that it's over engineered and that can be just as bad as for companies anyway for companies survival that can be just as bad as under engineered you know you get stuff that's so good that you know it costs the company a fortune to make it and then they never sell another one or you get stuff that's junk and then people just refuse to buy it because it's garbage. So there's a medium there. This was built in that time when they were shooting for, you know, super quality. So check that out. So because it's got those spring washers in there, you can snug it. It's going to squeeze that blade, but yet still 
allow it to open and close a bit as like the blade weld the weld of the blade goes by and stuff so you can snug it down you know but yet it's still got a little bit of spring but not too much to where it keeps good tension on the blade it keeps the blade held straight but yet still gives it a little bit of room for you know inaccuracies and thickness of the blade and blade weld so the dual bandsaw is back baby and i really am genuinely excited about this project it's not going to take all that much to get this thing up and in a functioning state and what we're going to do is plug away you know little little at a time until we get that thing you know up and functioning i really like i say don't think it'll take all that much all of the hard work or a lot of the hard work any anyway has already been done i'm not going to ask you to watch me you know wash all those parts that's already been done they're pretty much just dusty but i will bring you back in our next do all bandsaw video where we go out and we clean up the body of that saw because i think that'll i think that'll be kind of fun seeing the damage that was done by me by neglecting it for years i think that'll be kind of fun um and then you know we can really just develop a game plan and start assembling that saw and hopefully you know get it up and functioning before too long so i wish that we could go out and do it now but if i'm going to get this video out to you guys we really we gotta call it here so i am super excited about this so if you are interested there's tons of video in the back way back in the back of my channel where we did tons of work lots of machine work lots of fabrication lots of disassembly of the saw you can see it in its original state i think um, so if you're interested in the do-all band saw go back in my channel you know it'll get you up to speed if you're not so that is it thanks for watching viewers patrons subscribers anyone who's helped me out whatsoever it is much appreciated and i will see you next time and we can't we can't have a video without a chorus sighting i don't know if she's been in this video but she's about to be so hold on i want you to see her that's what she's doing working hard protecting the shop so that's it guys thanks for watching Cora, tell them bye. We'll see you next time.